Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and give God 30 seconds more of praise. Don't stop praising him because I walked up here. Because he God all day, all night long. He don't just stop being God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is a word from the Lord tonight coming from the book of Romans, a very familiar scripture. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. While you find it, I will yet pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for choosing me, Lord God, to stand before your people, Lord God. I thank you for depositing the things that you have for me to do for you, Lord God. Father, I thank you for my sisters and brothers and you, Lord, on tonight, God. Lord, thank you for leading and guiding our footsteps, Lord God. As I decrease and you increase, Lord God, I thank you right now. Thank you for the shepherd of this house, Lord, of this church, Lord. Continue to renew his mind, Lord God, in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Thank you. You may be seated. Tonight's title will reflect on our keynote scripture, part A of Romans 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Tell your neighbor, there is an in-between. See, Sister Adams have reminded us that we must be transformed because if we just change, we can always change right back. But what do you do in between your weights? What are you doing in between your transformation? Or but better yet, what have you done in to get to your transformation? See, some of us are now single, but looking to be married. Some of us want to conceive and start a family. Some of us have carried a baby for full, a full term. Some of us are children being trained in the word as a babe looking to soon be overcomers of this world. Some of us don't have two nickels to rub together but looking to receive the wealth of the wicked. Some of us can testify before they made it to this mic, there was an in-between. But what do you do in the between? See, the Lord gives us the answer if we take our time and read and study and meditate Romans 12 and 1. He gives us six answers. The first one was, you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. He tells us, this is how you live. You live as a sacrifice unto me. Number two, he tells us not just as a regular sacrifice, but as a holy sacrifice. Number three, he tells us, your life must be acceptable unto God. Not unto your mama, not unto your daddy, but unto God. Then he tells us, these are really our reasonable service. See, to help us understand the connotation of the word reasonable in the text, I did a little research. The word reasonable in Greek is pronounced logikos, logikos, meaning rational or logical. According to the Greek dictionary of the New Testament, our sacrificing is to be in accordance with the spiritual intelligence of those who are new creatures in Christ and are mindful of the mercies of God in contrast to worldly living. So we wait 
and have our being as believers of God and not as unbelievers. Number four, he tells us not to conform to this world. Now, the Greek definition for conform means to fashion or shape one thing like another. Now, this information convicted me because we as saints have to be able to draw a line when the world comes into the church. We're supposed to help shape and make their transformation process a little smoother by our teachings, preaching under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and as our spiritual intelligence as servants of the Lord. The world shouldn't bring in their traditions their ways of living for us to conform to because we need the church to be transformed from the world, not the church to be conformed to the world. Amen. Number five, renewing of our mind. To be fully transformed, we must live by renewing our minds. Some of us have been like a baby. You know when they first try to walk, they first they crawl, and then they stumble, and sometimes they fall. But Proverbs 24 and 16 tells us there's a difference between a believer and a non-believer. Glory to God. He says, for a just man falleth seven times and rise it up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Number six, transformed. You would know when you have been transformed. You would know when you have been changed and, and experienced your in-between because transformation has taken place. See, Romans 12 and 2, the last part tells us, we then may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, when you get to that point, it ain't no more faking. When you get to that point, you don't have to try to fit in. See, when you get to that point, you like what PK said earlier, we have flipped our faith. See, in our between times, we do what Jesus Christ has taught and demonstrated for us to do. We don't just sit there and stir. We don't stay stagnated and continue to wallow in our sins. We don't revisit Proverbs 26 and 11. As a dog returning to his vomit, so a fool returning to his folly. We get up and we keep reciting and meditating. Glory to God. In order for us to be transformed, we can't be constantly busting our head. Some of this stuff we got to learn through this process of us growing as Christians. We can't keep getting the same man, the same kind of man, and he was exactly like the last one you just had, and you got him in your house again, and y'all going to go through the same stuff again, and you're going to be looking crazy again, and that go 10 more years you don't gave him of your life. Now you're looking like you 80 and you 40 because you're giving away your time to all this mess. Now, we got to change and be transformed, like Sister Adam said, because we ain't doing this just to change right back. So we studied Psalms 121, verses 1 and 2. I will lift up my eyes into the hills from whence cometh my health. My health cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Now, if we take that scripture and just stick it inside our hearts, and no matter what these fools bring us, and we know they can't do nothing for us. Only God can do it. God can touch people hard. God can put people in your way. God can put people in their way. God can stop anything that they're trying to put up against us because we know no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Thank you, Lord. Number seven. Lessons and blessings demonstrating the in-between. Job had an in-between. Job 1 and 1 was his beginning. Go with me to your battles. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job. And the man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. The verse thir uh, third verse said, his substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen 
and 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Now this was the beginning when we read now about is how the word of God start the chapter off. God also give him an ending in Job 42 and 12. He said, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 she asses. Now, let's talk about the between. Tell your neighbor there is in between. See, we know that Job lost all his children. We know that he lost all his cattle. He lost his wife, the one who's supposed to be his other real, the same woman who he became one with in marriage, but didn't have the same flip your faith in God move. Job 13, 15, part 8 demonstrates Job change and his in between. Listen. He tells us, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And all this we learn from what Job teaches us, that the enemy will try and succeed in slaying us, but whatever move the enemy makes, it won't let him defer from where he is and to whom he belongs to. See, we look at the beginning and the end. See, God is not just giving us these stories for us to go to bed and sleep good. He giving us these stories so we can know what we being faced with. Now, this man had it going on. This ain't nothing I'm saying. This is what the word of God said. Now, we some evil people. Some of us just evil. Some of us do sin and repent and sin and just take advantage of God's will. But God describes this man as he was doing what he wanted him to do. He wasn't bothering nobody. He wasn't going up and down the sidewalk, knocking on folks' doors, coating other people's wives. He was paying his tithes, being a servant of God, but her yet, the enemy still wanted him. Y'all read the story. I don't think no, y'all ain't read. Y'all don't act like y'all read the story. Because this man was doing what he's supposed to do. Some of us can't do what we're supposed to do if they paid us. Some of us get paid and don't do what we're supposed to do. And he said in the word of God that he was doing what he's supposed to do. God gave the enemy permission. The enemy couldn't even come near him. God said, Why you, what you doing? He said, I can't touch her. I can't touch him. You got an edge of a protection around him. Some of us, y'all like sitting up here thinking that y'all got it going on. God got a hedge of protection around you. You ain't doing nothing. You don't scare nobody because you too busy. You don't scare nobody because you got all brothers and no sister. You don't scare nobody because you don't got four degrees. God got a hedge of protection around you. Job 13 and 15 part B. This was the coldest part of this scripture to me. He said, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Now, when you talk like that, you demonstrate transformation. Because in spite of everything, in spite of what his friends said, in spite of what his mama said, in spite of what his wife did, in spite of him seeing and losing everything he had, he said, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. He demonstrated transformation. I'm not going to let what's going on in my life stop me from doing what does say the Lord. See, I'm, well, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going through some between. I ain't just standing here just to be standing here. The enemy didn't even want me back up here. I had to go through, had to get my mouth back right because the enemy was bringing all kinds of cuss and stuff, letting me put stuff all in my head. I had to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is what I did 10, 15 years ago. I can't roll back like this, sir. Hold up now. Now the enemy don't get up in my house. And I got to get him up out. And if he got to take some souls with him, he going to get up out of here. Now, I wanted to talk about some powerful people, but I know the time I ain't going to allow. They experienced some in-between like David when his father 
his own father who didn't even show father and son love. How he didn't even suggest or make known that he could be picked as a candidate for a king. I wanted to talk about Esther. How in her in between, her parents died. She was raised by a cousin. Then having to put her life and her faith on the line for the people she only knew as her culture. Y'all better look at the word of God. The folks didn't do nothing for her. She went before that king because of the faith that she had for her people. She didn't have to do that. She did that because this is what Mordecai had installed in her from the time she was born. Her dad and her mama was gone on. You don't believe me? Look in the Esther, read it. But instead, I was led to talk about Saul. The Bible tells us the people wanted a king to rule over them on earth. And God gives Samuel the permission to find and choose a king. Now, when we read 1 Samuel 10, we read that Samuel had chosen Saul to become king. In 1 Samuel 9, it clearly states Saul was easy on the eyes. Come on now, y'all know how we read. We reading the Bible now. But they was describing him. Let me put some word on. Let me keep reading. Come on, eyes. Go back, Holy Ghost. He said uh, he was a choice young man and a goodly, and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier, this word of God, a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than, and I don't know what y'all, they describing a cold-blooded looking man. Who wouldn't want to have a good king looking good every day telling us what to do? If he cock at it and real short, we like, who chose him? Because that's what we do. We, we choose on the outer appearance. But he was described, they was describing this man. I was like, he's like, like he looked good. So they really describing so God really put a lot of emphasis on describing. There's some people in the Bible, God don't even get a night. But this word of God gave us a description of how he looked. So he wanted us to see that this man wasn't no ugly man. He looked good. Now, in our in between, I talked earlier about some of the things we should do. But it's sad to say, some of us still want to do what we want to do. And our unholy actions in our in between can lead to us being cut off. See, Saul was cut off in his in-between. See, the book of Job tells us how he did what he's supposed to do. God also, in, in contrast, gave us another story. It's other stories. I just was led by the Holy Spirit to do this one. That Saul got cut off. Hear me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Saul demonstrates this in the book of 1 Samuel. He became big-headed, prideful. Now, don't look at nobody. Just keep looking in the Bible. Don't look at nobody. He became big-headed, prideful, disobedient, seeking help from the dead and not from God. He practiced living a double life. He was supposed to be a king, but he was acting like he was a priest by offering sacrifices that God didn't approve of. What I'm saying is this. Yes, there is an in-between. We can choose to do what the Lord has told us and live our life more abundantly, or we can choose to lose our anointing by doing what we want and not experiencing the promise of God. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus went to the cross. Jesus went to the cross for you and me from the time he was born until the time he died for us and rose up on the third day with all power he had, all of our sin committed or omitted between his time of birth to his time of death. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Great job, Sister Kanita.